Welcome back to Vigor, as usual. Uh, I've been doing almost nothing but play this game for the past little while, and we're going to play some more of it today. Uh, as usual, I can't predict whether this is going to be a particularly interesting or fun session. They can be unpredictable, but uh, right now, one thing I'm dealing with is a challenge uh, to try to get other people to trigger alarm traps that I have placed. And so I guess I, I, maybe it'll be interesting to sort of like see... How, this is a pretty common challenge that you get a lot as the daily challenges cycle through. And so I thought I'd just sort of like, I don't know, talk through the way that I think about this particular challenge. Uh, so I've set up my um, uh, loadout here to include three alarm traps. So that's an unusual number of, you don't really need that many alarm traps most of the time, but because of the challenge, I'm bringing a bunch of them in alongside some uh, heals and also a bunch of bullets for my RPK. Uh, so let me trigger a, which one of these will be the best? So when I'm thinking about alarm traps, I want to have a map that has got a lot of like predictable places where other people are definitely going to go. Um, and so Broadland Bridges, for instance, is a difficult place for alarm traps because there are so many different places you could go. Um, it, it, it's a little bit less likely to, uh, you're, you're less likely to land in a place where you could obviously trip somebody up. Um, Anakin is much better for that because there's only a handful of places that anyone even could go at all. And so it, it, it depending on where you spawn, you might be able to make this a little bit easier for yourself. So I'm gonna try Anakin. The problem with Anakin is I'm just, I just suck at that map in general because I tend to be better at uh, sneaking around and surprising people and like moving around silently. Uh, and it helps to be in a map with a lot of obstacles, uh, like a lot of dense houses and things like that if you wanna stay hidden. Um, so Anakin is tough because it's like big wide open sheets of ice is, is most of the map. And so it's very difficult to stay hidden on that map. And so, uh, so it might not play well with my play style and you might just watch me get killed instantaneously. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, I think the upper left corner is actually usually the best place for my head. While we're waiting, I guess I gotta go around and strangle some rats. So, strangle that rat. I don't know if you can hear the rat strangling audio. I'm gonna strangle this rat. I'm gonna strangle all kinds of rats. Like that. You know what you did, rat. How am I doing on food? Oh, I've got 9,938. Let's see how high I get if I um, hit the garden up. Am I gonna hit 10,000? I just might. Yep, I've got 10,000 food. So what that means is 10,000 is how much food you have to earn in a week in order to maximize your food rewards. The, the thing you do with food is you come over here and you donate it. And we're about to go into the match and so you're not really gonna see very much of it. But in two days, they're gonna roll over. I've already put 10,000 food in, but once we roll over, I will now have a new 10,000 food to get in and immediately qualify the, for the rewards. So earlier on, uh, it was much harder for me to earn enough food in a week in order to do that. So I had to settle for lesser rewards. But since I've been persistently investing my resources and building up my food production, and because I've been religiously checking in with the game multiple times a day, um, I now, without a lot of effort, build up enough food to get the full 10,000 every time. So just got to wait for it to find some players. Uh, so it looks like right now we found nine people. You want as few people as possible on Anakin so you can move around freely without bumping into folks. Red of Court asks, what do you do with extra food? Uh, so I don't think, I don't think there's any tangible rewards for having extra food. What they say in the interface is, uh, you can donate more food for prestige. So I think, I haven't double checked this. I think they might have a leaderboard for food. In fact, I think that interface might've shown a leaderboard for food. So I think that extra food, the only reason to donate it is if you want to, um, if you want to do better on the leaderboards. So what I'll probably do is just keep donating the 10,000 and then holding back until the next 10,000. If I have a week where I don't get to play Vigor, if I've stored up multiple 10,000s, then I can just keep getting the prizes and that'll be fine. So I'm gonna ready up. So who are we facing here? Looks like we've got people who are at least dressed like noobs. This one is actually equipped like a noob. This one's got a purple sniper rifle. So he might just be hiding his uh, true nature there. Uh, or he might just be using the very, like, they give you one each of a bunch of the advanced weapons at the very beginning. So it could just be that this is his only Gawair 3. And he's just, whatever. Um, this guy seems like he's serious. Uh, Gore the Godslayer here. This guy, not well equipped. This guy, Sniper, he's only brought what looks like a bolt-action sniper rifle. So uh, I think we can predict what his strategy is going to be. Fun! Well, let's see where it drops us. Oh, in the middle of 
nonsense. Okay, but, but, we're close to this. This is a signal detector. Someone always wants a signal detector. So if I want to have a very, okay, I'm gonna grab a few things here. The problem is somebody else is probably rushing the signal. Oh, crap. Ah, red chest. Okay, let's remember that there's a red chest here. If I can get to a comm station and make myself invisible while carrying the chest, I can come back here, grab that thing, and get out of here. Okay, somebody else just used a comm station, which means they might have actually trapped it. I don't know. That door is always open at the outset, which is freaky. It's the like only one in the game that's that way. So if I can get here before other people, I can place an alarm trap here and then get the crap out before it's armed. And just for good measure, I'll stick another one in here. Uh, alarm traps work through walls. Uh, I'm pretty sure that like mine traps don't, but alarm traps do. Oh crap, there's a dude over there. I hit him. And I killed him. Okay, cool. So let's hide a little bit. Look at the map. Where do I... Okay, there is a comm station up there. Oh, but there's there's going to be some... Somebody spawned up here. I know it. So they're going to be... They might, they might be camping this thing, though. The locked container is one of the most popular treasures. So they're probably camping the locked container. This is my guess. And I could be wrong. I'm a oh, I just set off my own freaking alarm. I forgot I'd set that thing. Okay, somebody knows I'm coming. I'm not I'm not going after that. Um, that was idiotic. <laughs> I do that all the time, though. I always set off my own freaking alarm trap. Okay. So. This is riskier. I'm going to try to go after the comm station in the other town. Is that what I said? Is that what I marked on my map or did I mark the one in the wilderness? Oh, there's a freaking dude over there. Okay. So there are now seven people on this map. And yeah, okay, I did mark this one. So, okay. There's no particular reason for anyone to come over here. That might also be the one somebody already grabbed, though. Um, one thing that drives me crazy on this map, I don't know if you can hear it, the constant squawking of seabirds. Oh, crap. That guy over there. Did he see me? Which, I can't tell which way he's facing. I can't tell if he knows I'm here or not. He might be about to peek his head right over that thing and kill me like Safa did yesterday. Or maybe he's trying to overwatch the other town and he's not even looking at me and he thinks that he's already resolved things in this direction. It could seriously be either one of those and I've got no idea. Maybe he's just lying and wait for me to poke my head up. Crap, I have to jump a little bit to get up there. That's problematic. Jumping is louder than sneaking. So he could be lying away, or he could have just proceeded down the hill and he's gone. Don't know which. Oh, he's gone. I think he's headed for the comm station. Okay, that's three down. What the heck? This is not how I usually operate. Okay, well, if I've killed the guy in that direction, there could be another guy in that direction. I don't know. But there's a comm station there. So the place where I spawned, where that red chest was, that red chest contains an equivalent of the airdrop. And I like getting airdrops. And also there's, a, there's an ongoing seasonal challenge to get red chests. The problem is once you get the red chest, uh, your location is marked and everyone can find you. And I don't think I could escape from the middle of the map with people knowing I have the red chest. Oh, crap! Who is it? Who is that? Stop it. Oh, I see you. I see you. Oh, crap. 
Okay, I think... Oh, frack! I think it might be even multiple people. Okay, I'm gonna... Have some of this. I wonder... Okay. I'm just gonna run and wiggle around as I've seen other players do to confound Sniper's ability to hit me in the head. But the problem is they might still be able to see me from here. Do this really quickly. Okay. Oh, but I could tell. Oh, crap. There's a guy right up there. Get into cover. Okay. The problem now is somebody made it radioactive, which means I will have to escape quickly if I grab it. I can't just take my time. Crap, he found, dang it, he found a good spot. Oh, I'm dead now. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> I should have, I should have run. That's, I should have run and wiggled around. That, that would have been a much better move than trying to sneak around like I did. So, I got killed, but hey, that was a fun match, right? Like, I succeeded in taking out three people. I had a good plan, kind of screwed up there at the end, but that's fine. That's... That's just a lot of the fun of this game. So Raneth Cord, by the way, earlier on, he asked, can I place two alarm traps in the same spot? Theoretically, I can. The problem is if I stick around, they've got a really wide radius. And if I stick around, I'll set off the one that I just placed. Uh, and so I have to get out of range. Uh, I do tend to put multiple ones in the same rough location. Um, so that someone will, will sometimes trigger multiple ones uh, with, uh, in the same trip. But... But yeah, so, okay, well, that's how that went. <laughs> that, that's I don't really resent a match like that, though, because, yeah, I I can see what, what I did wrong. I should definitely have, like, when I saw that that guy was, like, hiding on that ridge and I got just barely out of reach, I should have run at that point. I should have moved away quickly, changed my location, and made it much harder for him to track me down. Instead, I stopped and tried to calculate where I was going to go next. Like, I was not safe. I don't know why I acted like I was safe. That was silliness. So I'm going to reload from a preset. Let's go back to Anakin and try again. I, I, it's too bad that I missed that opportunity with the red chest. Um, and because I think I seriously could have pulled that off. Like if, um, if I had successfully evaded that dude, if I had made better choices in that moment, um, I could have circled around without him knowing where I was headed, gotten back to that red chest, picked it up, and it would have been radioactive, which means that I would have had to get out quickly. But with no one knowing where I was... And with, you know, uh, like, three people down, um, and so the less density of enemies, uh, I probably could have pulled it off. So, yeah, so I had a good plan. Uh, my execution in that moment wasn't good. So, but that's kind of, you know, when I am killed in a frust under frustrating circumstances where I'm like, ah, oh, dang it, I had so much potential in this match and it, was fr and it was lost. When I feel that way, what I do to sort of make myself feel a little bit better is just think, okay, well, what did I learn from this situation? What what can I sort of retain in my head and be better at the game next time? And so what I feel like I learned from that situation was, obviously, when you get a little bit hidden from a sniper, all they're going to do is move to get a better angle at you. You have not escaped until you put a lot of distance and time between you and the sniper. And so when I got just barely out of his reach, I should have immediately run and, and, and just relocated myself so that he was going to struggle to find me again. Um, and so that was the thing I messed up. That's what I should have done in that situation. Um, either that, or I should have just reoriented on him, uh, found a way to sort of cleverly advance on him and take him out. Uh, either one of those would have been good. Instead, I just hid and acted like that made a difference. <laughs> but part of it was like, you know, I was a little bit distracted trying to figure out how to explain like what I was going to do with the red chest. And so uh, I should maybe focus on the game a little bit more. So, okay, who do we have against me here? A guy with a machine gun, just like me. So, so we're equivalently equipped here. We got lots of RPKs, actually. RPKs are nice because, like, you know, these are, they do, uh, they fire a very high caliber bullet. They, um, you know, they'll work over a long range. They have a very large uh, magazine and they reload more quickly than other machine guns. Because they're, you know, magazine fed instead of belt fed. Uh, it doesn't take nearly as much time to reload between uh, magazines. Now, the other the other machine guns tend to have magazines that are like 101 bullets. This one only has 76. But in a firefight with one person, the difference between 76 and 101 is 
negligible. You're only going to fire 30 bullets maximum uh, in a typical engagement. This guy's over-equipped for being dressed as he is. This guy's appropriately equipped. Okay, so we got... Okay, I've started in the same place. That's odd. Okay, so... Again, I could head up there. That's the nearest. And I've got a red chest again. What the crap? This happens to me sometimes. Sometimes it feels like I'm getting very, very consistent spawns. I mean, the rest of the map didn't spawn the same way. So where is the nearest... Okay, okay somebody just used a comm station and moved it here, which means it was probably this comm station or this comm station moving it close. It could have been this one trying to move it, trying to move it far, farther away. Um... I'm going to go north. North is scary. North usually attracts... That, that northern town usually attracts a fair number of people. Um, but I am not going to grab that red chest unless I can make myself invisible. So that was our first use of a comm station. And all it did was move. So that means that nobody's trapped the, uh, the airdrop with a comm station yet. So orienting on the comm station as a target is still a good idea. I think. So let's hope that the comm station was the one in the east, not the one I'm headed towards. Because the comm stations have cooldowns. So you can use the same comm, the same comm station twice in the same match, um, but you have to wait a while. And so if I get to it and it's useless and is also like defended by some jerk, then uh, you know th that'll probably end poorly for me. Okay, I just heard a gunshot maybe to the east. Okay, so there's no particular purpose right now in using this disruption tower. I might use it on my way out, because you get you even if there's no particular tactical purpose to you using it, which I, I have no tactical purpose to using it right now. Um, it, you get experience for it, so it might be worth using just for the experience, um, but not on the way up, because once you, when you use a disruption tower, yeah, it uh, it does sort of clear the map markers from anyone near you. But right now, I wasn't. I'm not. Nobody near me is using a map marker in a way that would hurt me, and so I have no purpose in clearing their map markers, and it would have the side effect of telling them exactly where I am. So that wouldn't be good. So I don't want to use it right now. I only want to use it if I'm about to leave. Frickin! Oh, you complete butt! What are you? Stop! Stop it right now! Wiggly, 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 wiggly. Okay. I didn't even hear the gunshots, which makes me think that was very far away. I'm going to use a heal, and okay, this is still on cooldown, so my fears are realized. Uh, let's use this real quick, just to get me up to maximum. Because a lot, a, a weird number of the firefights I get into come down to the, your last few pixels of health. And so having maximum health actually really is potentially very valuable. I'm trying to see if any, but yeah, so there's always a lot of fuel down here. So while I'm waiting for that cooldown, I'll just grab all this fuel. Good use of my time. There's also a telephone up here, but I have no desire to get into a duel right now. You saw how that went last time. Safa just kicked my ass. Um, oh, hey, speaking of Safa, Safa just joined the chat. Hi there, buddy. Um, so right now I'm just waiting for the cooldown on the comm station that's near me. Somebody else just uh, uh, activated another one. I'm waiting for the cooldown over here, though, because I want to make myself invisible when I'm carrying the supply drop because... I have, uh, I've located the red chest. But I don't want to have, like, everybody on my ass the moment I get the red chest, so... Especially because there's a freaking sniper on this map. Ah, uh, cool down. Oh, wait, have we just... It doesn't have the red light, or does it on this side? Have we... Has it been long enough? That... That the comp stations would have been disabled altogether? That doesn't seem likely right now. I don't think I've been on this map very long. 
Okay, so ha Safa says that yeah, the airdrop is on its way. I've 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 missed my shot. My shot. So okay, here's my problem. There's a sniper over here somewhere, and the red chest is here. Now the sniper could have moved. I don't know. Maybe I don't need to worry about the sniper, but you know what? No, I do need to worry about the sniper. Regardless of whether the sniper is there, I'd be an idiot not to worry about them. Okay, somebody has been through here since the last time I was here. In fact, it might be, they may have activated the same comm station I was just at. So can I see that sniper who is up here on this mountain? I don't see them. I don't see any flashing scope. They could have relocated or they could be at an angle where they can't see me here. Not sure. I'm absolutely going to do this, even though whoever came through here came through here recently and probably could easily turn back around and find me because I just did that. So that's probably a dumb move. I don't know. But also, a comp station has been activated twice now on this map. And so what the first one moved it moved the location, but the second one, I don't know what it did. It's entirely possible that that second comm station actually turned on stealth. So it's entirely possible that I could safely uh, get out of here with the red chest, but I don't know. And unless I actually got to a comm station myself, there's no way for me to know. Um, I'm Safa, I'm curious. If I am in a the range of a disruption uh, tower, even if it was my disruption tower, will it disrupt um, people's ability to see me with the airdrop? Or will it only disrupt my ability to see... Or, or, or sorry, people within the circle's ability to see them? If I grab this right now, somebody's been hanging around out here. Heading down this way might be smarter. And people very rarely operate in this area at all. Um, so it could be that this is the best exit. If I'm being tracked, this might be the best exit. Um, okay, so Safa says yes, it will block it, except that I think it's just expired. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. You know what? Let's risk it. Boom. Okay, okay. Oh, dang it. Okay, it did turn red. For a second, I was starting to think that maybe somebody did turn on stealth. Well, the way you can tell, either way, it always warns you that you're going to be visible. But the way you can tell whether you're stealth is if that icon at the top middle of the compass turns red. If it turns red, that means during the redness, other people can see you. Airdrop incoming. Get ready. But if it stays white and never turns red, that means no one can see you. This is stupid. Why am I stopping? Um, so everyone knows I'm here. It's entirely possible that somebody is in... Oh, again, very stupid. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, the reason it's stupid is because if I hold still, a sniper can headshot me. Um, if there's anybody on this end of the map, they can absolutely get to my destination. They can totally tell where I'm headed. They can get to my destination, lie in wait for me, and just easily kill me on my way in. Um, and so, now, it is possible that there wasn't, there weren't a lot of people down here. Or that whoever's down here wasn't paying attention. I might be home free. However, chances are slim. If I actually get out without being ambushed, uh, that'll be a freaking miracle. There's nobody in the lighthouse shooting at me. And hopefully, if that if that remains true, then maybe this is the only direction I have to worry about. So Safa's watching me and um, is an expert at this game. And it's probably like noticing 19 things I'm doing wrong. Uh, but I don't know what any of them are. And so I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. So, like... Normally, if I'm if I'm hidden, 
I'll, I'll stick to the periphery of the map, try to keep an obstacle between me and the entire rest of the map um, to minimize the chances that anyone will notice me. However, with my map marker just clearly visible all the time, or at least there's another person for them to chase. Somebody else grabbed the other uh, airdrop, the real airdrop. And so it could be that because they have two targets to chase because it's late in the game, maybe they've decided to focus on the other guy and not me. I don't know. Um, I feel like I should have been killed by now. <laughs> so, I mean, unless... Because there haven't I haven't been hearing a ton of gunshots. Like, usually in a map, you'll be hearing tons and tons of gunshots in the background revealing that, you know, people are killing each other. You can sort of do, like, a little bit of mental math figuring, okay, I heard a bunch of gunshots and then they stopped. Someone probably died. And you can sort of do some mental math and figure out, like, how many people are likely to be left on the map which can sort of help you sort of gauge your own odds. Okay, nobody's close because I got no crows. I think we've made it. Whoa, we did it. Okay, cool. That I didn't handle that nearly as strategically as I intended to. I just lucked out. <laughs> but wow, okay, there we go. Very small amount of, uh, of uh, experience because, you know, I mean, I got 500 for the airdrop, but it's not like I picked up a ton of other stuff. But I did also make progress on my um, my red chest uh, seasonal challenge, so that's nice. But the thing I didn't make any progress on is the thing I came here to do, which is to lay um, alarm traps. So what am I even doing? I just got I just keep getting distracted by this stupid red chest. Okay, so let's refill my inventory. Let's kick it off again, and this time. Let's figure that I'm not going to find the red chest. I'm not going to get distracted by wanting to get it. Uh, and instead, we'll actually try to place an alarm trap <laughs> that catches somebody else. We'll see if we can do that. Because, well, first, if I had actually... You saw that in that northern town, I, I went through, passed through the northern town, went up to where the comm station was, gathered some fuel up at the fishing village, and then came back down, and somebody else had already been through all that whole town. If I had been leaving alarm traps behind me, I had expected to pass back through it again, and so I didn't, before anyone else, and so I didn't leave alarm traps. If I had left alarm traps behind me, I absolutely would have caught somebody in them. Um, and so, this time, I gotta have maintain singular focus. I am here to leave alarm traps. That's what I'm here to do. I want to get this challenge done. So, um, Safa, having watched me play, I'm curious if you have any, like, overall advice. Like, stuff where, where you, like, you, like, any glaring stuff where you're, like, this guy is playing completely different from me in an obvious way and would really benefit from from changing the way it works. Now, in some ways, you know, my tactics, a lot of them are just derived from my personality and some of them I probably can't ever change and really have fun, you know. I probably can't play in an entirely different way and enjoy it, but there could be areas where, like, I absolutely could be playing in a, in, in a better way that totally aligns with the way I enjoy playing and, uh, and where I could really benefit from <laughs> from your wisdom. Uh, for those who don't know, Safa is, a, uh, is the second... Uh, second killing most kick player in the in the world. You can see right here. Oh wait, what is? It? Oh, this is not kills. Kills. See NHH Safa. That's who's in my chat right now. Uh, uh, the second second most murderous player in the game. Um, I lucked out and uh, he noticed. He, he watches my uh, my videos, and uh, he noticed that I was playing Vigor, and so we came in to uh, to hang out. But yeah, if you're still in the chat, Safa, I would love to get uh, overall advice from you. I've definitely observed how some really uh, skilled players play. It is pretty different for me. There are some players who are just totally focused on kills, who seem to just run around at top speed, but constantly bob and weave and move around so that it's hard to headshot them. And by moving around quickly, it seems like they're sort of deliberately gathering attention. So players will engage them. And uh, sometimes they're armored, so they can take a, a, a hit or two, unless somebody gets a lucky headshot. They can take a hit or two before they die. And so they'll run around... They'll, they'll risk taking a hit or two, but once they get the attention of somebody, or, and if somebody gets their attention, they orient on them and kill them. And I don't think I can actually enjoy playing that way, because I just, one, one thing I really like is the stealth angle in the game, trying to get the drop on someone, trying to be sneakier than them. And so I don't think I could enjoy that particular play style, but you'll notice that when I was being targeted by snipers, I did move that way. Because I was like, you know, right now stealth is not an option, they know where I am. I absolutely have to uh, uh, have to move the way in order to keep from getting shot. 
So I'm Safa says he'd actually need to talk uh, instead of just typing in the chat in order to get this across because there's just too much in this game. Um, so he says, for instance, jammers work differently from the disruptive tower with different markers on the map, like phone duels and airdrop carriers. Okay, yeah, that's that's a thing I didn't know. I assumed that they just worked absolutely the same. Oh, yay! Thank you, Gamerland582. Ooh, Gamerland582 is uh, enriching the pot. Oh, oh, and Team Swink wants, uh, won't be outdone. Oh, Gamerland's like, no, I'm going to be ahead. <laughs> I love I love it, sort of characterizing this like an auction or something. Um, okay, so with four people having leveled up the loot in the map, um, that changes the calculation for me. I still want to drop these alarm traps, but... Yeah, so normally what I would do in a situation like this, as a kind of, you know, mediocre player, is uh, rather than going after the big ticket items, I avoid the big ticket items and go after the um, the areas that tend to attract less attention from the most dangerous players. And I just vacuum up as much loot as I possibly can, because there's, like, significantly more loot on the, game, uh, on the board now than there used to be. Okay, so right here we've got... Okay, locked container. I might be the closest to the locked container. So because I'm trying to place alarm traps and get credit for the for the challenge, I think I'm going to rush the locked container, drop an alarm trap, and then get the crap out of there <laughs> so that all of the uh, more daring players can actually fight over the locked container. The reason I feel like, even though I'm not very close to the locked container, people tend to spawn towards the edges of the map and not towards the middle. So I'm taking a wild flying leap and guessing that I might actually be one of the closer players to this thing, even though I'm far away from it. Because I think everyone else is also far away from it. Okay, where am I relative to it? It's real close. Like, Oh, it's this right here. It blends in with the freaking fences. Okay, so I'm going to place a alarm trap right there. And then I want to be nowhere near this place because all of the most advanced players... Oh, what the heck? Fish, delicious fish. All of the most advanced players are going to be going that direction. They're going to want to get the big fancy loot and the prestige of acquiring it. So let's just not be anywhere near here now. I'm sure this is funny for I'm Safa to watch me like play like an absolute coward because this is not how I'm Safa plays at all. Um, but, uh, okay. Let me just hang out here for just a second. Where was that tower? That tower is here. So that somebody knew that I was up this direction. So this might actually be my biggest source of threat. Let's try to move this way. There's probably somebody up in that town. So yeah, so somebody, if, if the person who... Okay, so there's the SIGS detector right there. So when that person fired that off, they were there. They saw where I was. They might have decided to target me. But I don't see them. So maybe they went for the for the water tower. I mean the water tower. For the um, lighthouse instead. If they went for the lighthouse and they won't be coming up behind me. And I'm going to head towards this little village. Somebody always spawns, I think, near this village. And so given that this is a loot heavy map, I'm betting that somebody hung out in this village and is trying to loot all of the stuff. Which means that I should expect resistance when I come up this way. But if I kill somebody, they probably also have full pockets. So it'll be rewarding if I succeed in killing them before they kill me. Oh, wow. SIGS detector again. Okay. That could indicate that we've got a signals detector camper. Because that was really fast. Like, those were two uses of the signals detector in close proximity. Um, sometimes that means that there's somebody who's camping the signals detector with a sniper rifle trying to see where everyone is and trying to see if they can just take them out without moving very far. So, Demonic Robot asks, is this a battle royale? That's an interesting question. I think... No, it is, it's not. It's an extraction shooter. Uh, but I think that that might actually be its closest cousin. Um, th the way this game works is, like a battle royale, you are sort of dropped in a map with a bunch of other people and you're trying to get out alive. But you've got a goal, uh, like killing other characters, uh, killing other players is actually, it's a side goal. It's not your main goal. You don't win by killing the other characters. 
you win. There isn't actually like a, a, a single official winner of the match. You win by accomplishing whatever your own objectives are here, uh, which is usually looting a bunch of stuff, usually leaving with a bunch of equipment, uh, supplies, resources, that, uh, and experience. That's your goal. So killing people is one way to get that, because you can loot their corpses, you can get experience for killing them, uh, you can get access to things that they were trying to get that now are yours uh, because you killed them. So killing them is often useful. And in fact, in this particular game, there are other games where... You know, you lose a lot by getting killed, and, and players will actually try to divide, devise ways to avoid conflict. Um, I haven't seen much of that in Vigor. In Vigor, you basically, if you see someone, you shoot them. Um, it, unless you think, it, like, you know, you won't kill them, and it'll put you in danger to shoot them. Okay, somebody's fighting over that direction. I'm surprised I didn't immediately see someone in this area. Um, I'm actually surprised that nobody has looted this building yet. I've been away from here for a while. And also, nobody's gone after the locked container. Where are the other players? What are they doing? Usually by now, there's been a fight at the locked container. It's like everybody's favorite place to go. It's actually, it's interesting. Those big ticket items like the locked container and the, and the, barred, the barred house with the safe in it and the timed safe. Um, Sometimes, like, there's like, it's almost like a personality test for the group that you're with. Like, sometimes you're matching into the group where everyone rushes them and immediately gets into giant fights over them. And sometimes you're with a group that ignores them almost entirely until the very end of the match. Uh, but oftentimes when it looks like they're ignoring them, what they're actually doing is camping them. Like, everyone will get close to them, but not commit. They won't actually be the one who walks up and tries to interact with the thing. Because they know that if they do, the rest of the map will be notified. By the way, I'm not grabbing that car yet because it'll, might, it might set off an alarm and attract attention. Um... They will, if you're the first one to interact with it, it'll notify everybody else on the map. And then they'll come for you and they'll know exactly where you are. They'll have an advantage over you. And, you know, if you're, if you're a mediocre player like me, you'll probably die. And so what they'll do instead is they'll hang back and they'll camp it. And they'll try to get into a position where they can see that first person. If that first person shows up and they can be the one who kills them. And there's also it's kind of this weird game of chicken where you are um you don't want to be the first one or, or it's almost like a, like a cowboy duel or something you don't want to be the first person who goes in because you'll definitely be killed by a camper but if you're the if like if if two if two people if you observe two people fighting there and they one of them kills the other one and then you kill the survivor you're the third person there is there a fourth person you don't know should you approach and try to claim the treasure or should you keep holding back until a fourth person. Yes! Yes, there's my... <laughs> my alarm got set off. Awesome. Uh, okay, so that person who set off my alarm is probably flipping out right now because <laughs> they think I'm camping it. They think I set that there so that I would know when they arrived because I was camping nearby and trying to snipe them. So now they're probably, like, losing their minds uh, <laughs> because, like, where's the person who's camping this? And hilariously, like, there might genuinely be a person camping it who takes advantage of that alarm trap and kills that person. Um, and so the person who dies, who set off the trap, who might potentially die, they might assume that the person who killed them placed the alarm trap. It was all part of an elaborate plan when it totally was not. So I am shocked, shocked, I tell you, that no one is competing with me for this. I've almost never come here without somebody else wanting it too. Because this is one of the easier places to get a bunch of loot from. But maybe this is a map full of people who don't care about loot. Entirely possible. Uh, okay, so I'm going to loot this one last house, but I mean... The plane is near. So far I've accomplished my objective, which was to get at least one alarm trap. There we go. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, the SIG, SIG detector guy knows what I, where I am. But I'm far enough away they can't immediately do anything about it. But now I've got the photo. Oh. Okay, so the photo is telling me where the buried treasure is. You can't tell, but uh, there's a boat behind my head right now. So that means that the treasure is, like, right over here someplace. I don't think I can safely get there. Or can I? Well, what is the chances that somebody's up here? 
I haven't been paying attention. Did they already get the time safe? You know what? People are fighting around the locked container. And they're in that area partly because I right now I'm pretty close to where the um, airdrop is going to fall. It's entirely possible that nobody is around the boat. If nobody's around the boat, I might actually be able to grab that buried treasure and get out of here. Oh, excuse me. Crap. Um, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Ah. Ah. Okay. Let's get away from this. So if somebody's nearby, they're about to kill me. Um, but... Let's see here. So, I'm Safa says, camping is horrible in this game. So when you say camping is horrible, do you mean like people do it a lot? Because yes, I absolutely agree with you. They do it way, way too much. Um, I'm going to need that. Okay, I'll just take a little bit of food here. So I, I'm curious. So Safa, I assume you've been playing the game. Oh, what? Oh, okay. That gunshot was in the direction I'm headed. That does make me nervous that if I go that way, I will be killed. Um, portable SIGs. Okay, you know what? I'm getting the frick out of here. So, portable SIGs detector means that somebody used a device that tells them where the nearest player is, and I was the nearest player. Now, if there's only a few of us left on the map, I might actually be really far away from them. I don't know, though. So I'm not going to take the risk of going after that buried treasure. I'm just going to get out of here with my stuff. Because that could be somebody who is very good at stalking other players. And who has now targeted me because uh, they've used the portable signals detector. So I am just not do dealing with that mess. I got a fair amount of loot. Uh, I'm happy. I'm good. And somebody tripped my, my, uh, my alarm trap. So yeah, I I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um... Oh, but yeah, so I'm staff is pointing out that, like, yeah, that people tend to, um, like, right near the signals detector or near, like, some of the most uh, uh, popular locations and near the exits, players will just lie down in a bush with a machine gun. And it, that's, like, one of the most common tactics. And it, like, it drives me crazy because sometimes you can really tell, like, like uh, the other day I got absolutely smoked by somebody who was, um, uh, yeah, who was just, they, they had a sniper rifle, actually. They were up on a hill. And sometimes, you know, like, I don't want to assume somebody's a camper. Like, it's entirely possible for somebody to notice me, get down, wait for the right opportunity and shoot me and look like they were camping when actually they were just playing like a normal person. And just because I only see the aftermath of the kill, it they could look like a camper but not be a camper. There have been times when I've been accused of being a camper because I just looked like one to somebody who was killed by me. But this one guy, he was, like, up on a hill that had no loot. It was near nothing. It wasn't near the signal ta signal detector. It wasn't near anything. But all he was doing was camping my exit. And I was just like, how do you enjoy this game? I don't understand. <laughs> I just don't understand what's fun for you about this. You have to lie there for so long uh, and before somebody just walks under your crosshair. It just doesn't make sense to me. I've been playing this for longer than I anticipated. But you know what? I've got, I've got one more alarm trap to, to, to trigger. So I went to Grand Time this time, mostly just because um, uh, Anakin was about to expire. And sometimes if it's about to expire... Uh, people stop selecting it, which means that you'll end up waiting too long for a match, uh, so long for a match that Anakin will just go away. So I chose Grand Time because it had some time left, and it's also a fairly narrow-shaped map. Uh, so so Anakin is spread out, but it's got these very tight, um, like like areas of interest where you can definitely predict people are going to want to be. Grand Time is not as spread out, uh, but it's got sort of this narrow crescent in the middle of all the interesting stuff, and the whole map is shaped like a crescent. Um, which means basically there's kind of two routes up and down the map. And so everybody eventually crosses paths. But of course I'm in the least convenient place. Okay, great. Um, this is not a scenario where I actually can effectively place an alarm trap. And look at this location. Like, it's got the, the SIGS detector and the time safe. Ugh, this is going to be garbage. Okay, so... Hmm... I think this is a rooftop signals detector too, which is going to be, it's weird because you have to really put yourself in danger to go there. So I'm going to, I don't know. I, this is not a good alarm trap situation. The best alarm trap situations are when you are close to a point of interest you don't care about, but that everyone else cares about. So you can rush it, 
put an alarm trap on it and then get out of there like I did in the last map. This one, not quite like that. So, okay, here's a spot, here's a Ford. Okay, so somebody's already on the time safe. So that, that that's what that sound is, that ka-ching, uh, is them flipping the first switch on the time safe. So, oh, and, and that's the Bard House safe getting unlocked. So both safes already had somebody close to them. I'm going to be Johnny come lately to whatever situation I come into. So I'm not going to be able to alarm trap very well. But huh, I'm wondering if there might be a different strategy on this map that makes sense. Like, oh, there's a comm station. Like, this is such a narrow crescent-shaped map. When somebody wants to leave... There's only so many places they can go and only so many routes they can take. I wonder if just placing kind of random alarm traps along the narrow route might actually have a useful effect. By the way, I hate freaking barns in this game because they're so huge and they're really attractive. And I'm like, oh, man, I bet there's a bunch of stuff in that barn. There is almost never a bunch of stuff in the barn. The barn next to... Like, like it's just... Compared to its scale, it's got nothing. And it drives me nuts. Because I, I can't convince myself that that's true. I always feel like, no, 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 this barn. This time, this barn is going to have a lot of stuff. Because look how big the building is. Clearly, it's going to have a lot of stuff in it. Did somebody already vacate this entire place? Uh, somebody probably spawned near here already. Because, yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes houses get meager spawns. And you don't get a lot of loot. But zero loot in a house usually means somebody's been there. Hey there, Indian Gaming. Thanks for joining us. Anyway, so I'm wondering, is there a narrow area somebody is likely to pass through on their way out of the map? Like with one of the uh, treasures that people are currently grabbing. And can I trap that? Now, the problem is... It looks narrow from above, but it's not actually all that narrow. Okay, somebody keeps flipping the time safe switch, not knowing where the second switch is. Why are they doing that? Are they trying to get everyone's attention? Okay, finally, they actually found the thing. All right, so I'm just going to, like a silly person, I'm just going to plant an alarm trap right here. So if somebody decides to run up through this valley to escape, through this little pass, they'll get alarm trapped. And similarly, let's put one here. So if somebody tries to come up through this way, they'll hit one of my alarm traps. That probably won't happen, <laughs> but whatever. I gotta, gotta keep my eye on the prize, right? You know, I don't wanna forget your objectives, even if circumstances change. Though, well, actually, that's not true. That's not good advice. Good advice is adapt to your current circumstances. If I wasn't playing this specifically in an episode that I probably titled something like Alarm Trap Challenge, uh, I probably would have just completely ignored the alarm traps for this particular mission because I'm like, oh, this is not a good time for me to be doing the alarm traps. But because I sort of committed myself, I should probably do something like that. So, okay. So in order for somebody to actually hit that alarm trap, they have to try to escape up this route past me. Which means I should probably stay as hidden as I can as I'm moving south. Um, like, pass through houses and things so that it's easy for someone else to get past me without either of us noticing each other. Because if I notice them, I'm probably going to try to murder them and they're going to try to murder me. Um, and that ruins the chances of them hitting my alarm traps. So this looks like somebody probably already did this house. Oh, well, maybe not. Eh, they probably no, they probably did it and they were just careless. Probably just left a couple of furnitures unsearched. All right, this is going to be a boring one. Oh, come on. I almost I almost hope someone kills me just so we can start a different match that has more potential. Now, one danger in Grand Time is because the exits are so far apart from each other. There's like two up here, two up here, and a weird one here. 
Like, the further I get from the exit, the more dangerous this is for me. Because once the timer starts, like, I'm in huge trouble if I, if I can't get to an exit. If I'm, like, right in the middle of this map and, uh, and the radiation storm comes in, I'm kind of screwed because either I will actually be killed by the radiation or I'll have to run so recklessly towards the exit that I'll probably get camped. Aha! Toilet fertilizer. Delicious. So, <laughs> the first time I saw fertilizer in a toilet in this game, I was like, oh, that's pretty clever. I like that. And then I started seeing fertilizer in other pieces of furniture. And then I was like, wait a minute. What are they saying about the people in this world? Like, I understand why there's fertilizer in the toilet. Why is there fertilizer in your nightstand? What are you doing? Who lives in this place? What kinds of monsters live here? The answer, of course, being Norwegians. Um, <laughs> no, just, I don't know what I'm <laughs> trying to say there. Nothing at all. Um, this game is um, <laughs> a bunch of Czech developers judging Norwegians is what this is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So mm -hmm. I am so sorry, by the way. <laughs> if you're watching this later on YouTube, feel free to skip ahead while I sneak fruitlessly through this town, accomplishing absolutely nothing. I mean, if this had been, you know, if somebody had like spent hard currency to up the loot, I'd be getting a lot more out of this, and I'd actually at least feel like, you know, economically this is worthwhile, even if I'm not, you know, able to put on much of a performance with these events. But I'm not even getting a lot of loot this way. I'm just, like, picking up meager scraps as I move through here. I'm really kind of shocked how little conflict there's been. I mean, somebody just vacated the safe. Somebody grabbed the timed safe two i haven't been hearing gunshots are we all just avoiding each other the plane is near get ready for the airdrop is everyone camping like what the crap is going on okay so the airdrop is happening which means the next major event is the timer is the radiation coming in so i should probably I'm, I'm equidistant from the exits. That's not great. I'm going to keep moving in the same direction. But I think it's probably smart for me to no longer try to loot. This is going to be the most fruitless, stupid mission. I'm either going to get out having collected almost nothing. Or I'm just going to get camped on my way out of here. And it's going to be dumb. I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> I knew I should have quit while I was ahead. Maybe I should just run around and be an idiot just to get some attention. I mean, <laughs> that's kind of my whole personality in real life. Um, yeah, I'm almost, I'm almost wishing for a car alarm. Where is the SIGs? Oh, it's pretty close to me, actually. Okay, well, let's get away. All right. When I say the SIGs, I mean the signal detector. The thing that reveals to one player where everyone else is. Oh, okay. Somebody picked it up. They're behind me. Are they headed north? If they're headed north, they're holding still. They're in a firefight right now. Okay. If they're headed north, they might trigger my alarm traps. This might not be completely useless. So, uh, Safa, I am Safa, by the way, it's spelled I-M-S-A-F-F-A, -F -F -A. uh, if anybody is, uh, you know, listening to this on YouTube and can't just check the chat, uh, says that he actually streams fairly often, and if they want, if you want to watch, um, interesting gameplay, you can, you can follow Safa and, uh, see something much better than what I'm doing here, because, you know, Safa, if you were playing this game, what would you have done? Would you have actually run around and tried to make some noise to get attention? Would you have, like, deliberately... Because, I mean, I didn't even get to the points of interest until people had already vacated them. Because I was moving at a normal, stealthy pace. And um, just the conflicts were done. 
by the time I got anywhere close. Would you have deliberately tried to make noise? Would you have deliberately tried to drum up conflicts? Um, I guess uh, maybe you would have headed for the signals detector or used a portable signals detector to just find a player and just zero in on that player. I'm starting to think, like, what, what do you do to sort of, like, raise the rate at which you are, are, are killing characters? Uh, even in, in, like, situations like this where there's not a lot of firefights going on, the distribution of people on the map means that, um, you know, the, basically each of the points of interest were just easy for somebody to get, and, and they face no resistance. Hmm. Okay, so um, Safa says that he actually doesn't use a um, a portable signals detector right away because he actually knows he knows the likely spawn locations well enough that he actually um, he can predict where the first few players he needs to kill are. So he just heads right for them, um, and then after people have had enough chances to move around, that's when he relies on the signals detector. Oh crap! Am I close enough to an exit now? I am. Oh, somebody's camping this exit. Okay. We're going to get to watch me get killed. At least something interesting is going to freaking happen. So I'm near an exit. Somebody is camping it. I don't know where or who. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell. I don't have a portable sil signals detector. But I wonder... Can I use an alarm trap to misdirect them? Oh, there he is. Okay, he ran for the exit. Crap, if I had just let him go, I probably would have just escaped just fine. So wait. The thing is, I don't know where the boundary of the exit is. Did he actually... Did he time out? Is he gone? Or is he likely camping just close to the exit? Might be gone. Yes, okay. Yes. I am in the exit zone, so he probably did just time out. Okay, cool. Well, that was not even interesting. And even the guy who got the... The thing, it didn't trigger my alarm trap. Nothing useful happened at all. Okay, yeah, so... um. I'm Safa says that actually that I could have used that jammer that I had as a sort of signals detector. The thing is, because the crows had already launched, I did know he was close. Um, and so I think that's all the, all as far as I understand, all the jammer tells you is, is somebody in range of the jammer? It doesn't tell you their direction or anything, right? So, um, so my assumption was that I couldn't have used the jammer to get any more information than I already had just from the crows. Um, okay, well, that was ridiculous. Let's try one more time. <laughs> Let's go to Sagbrook, actually. I know Sagbrook pretty well. Let's go over there. It's, it's, it's another map. It's not quite as concentrated as Anakin, but it's got several really discrete points of interest that I might be able to use to make the alarm trap happen. So let's do Sagbrook, and then we'll probably get out of here, even if this is garbage. I don't know. We'll, we'll, even if it doesn't go well, whatever. I need, I need to move on to do some work. Let's see all right so yeah okay so i'm safa says that actually yeah that that, that that uh i am right about the way the jammer works it'll tell you if it is jamming someone within its radius you know i have had trouble actually i don't have a good sense right now of what the radius of the jammer is like i don't when when, when it says you've disrupted someone i don't know if if like does that mean that they're right outside the building i'm in does it mean that they're a little further away I haven't gotten a sense for that. I imagine you probably have a much stronger sense of uh, what a jammer is telling you uh, when it tells you that somebody's close. All right. Let's have a look at these people. But yeah, so I have actually, uh, you know, I'm not nearly to the degree that Safa has, but I have actually also gotten a little bit familiar with where the spawns tend to be. Like, for instance, in Anakin, there's almost always somebody who spawns at the lighthouse. And so if I spawn near the lighthouse, I'm like, okay, if I want to get into a fight, let's head to the lighthouse because there's going to be somebody there. Um, stuff like that. But I, I don't think I, I don't have nearly the same level of uh, expertise there. 
Oh, so I'm Steph is pointing out the thing that I could have learned. Because, yeah, it, do, it, it was true. That guy did run for the exit. So it might be, it might have been that he was camping and then just decided to leave as soon as the radiation started. Or it could be that he was just running back to the exit exactly like me. In which case, he was going, yeah, so, okay, yeah. So what I'm Steph is saying is, basically, when two people enter the range of the exit, the crows fire once. And if people leave and enter again, it'll fire again. But as long as they're both staying within the radius, it won't fire again. And so if the other person has left then you won't know the difference between them leaving and them camping. So he was saying that what I could have done was waited a little bit, and if I didn't get into a fight, place a jammer, and if the jammer didn't say, I jammed a person, then that means the other person left, and I could probably make it out. Um, or it means they moved a little bit further away <laughs> and could still camping. So it's not, it wouldn't be 100%, but at least it could raise my confidence a little bit. Okay. Ugh, frack, I'm still far away from crap. Okay, but... Locked container might be my best bet. It's sketchy. I might be the second person to arrive, in which case my whole alarm trap thing is not going to work. Um, I'm going to make a beeline for it and see what I can do. Well, not quite a beeline because I see some fertilizer. Delicious fertilizer. Oh, I have to. Oh, num, 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 num. Oh, yummy fertilizer. Okay, anyway. Um, and now I've got a ridge between me and where I'm headed. Okay, so thundering through the woods like this is usually a really bad plan. That's how you get killed. Okay, yeah, so I knew that somebody usually spawns down here, and they're after the safe right now. So they didn't run up to the locked container. Locked container might still be uncamped. Uh, Indian Gaming wants to know if this is on PC. It is not. Actually, that really surprised me. This feels like the kind of game that would be on PC. But no, it's on... Okay. It could be camped. It could be camped. It could be camped. It is on... As far as I'm... As far as I understand, Xbox and Switch. And only Xbox and Switch. Okay. Back to the woods! Oh, crap! Woo! Woo! Yes! Yes! <laughs> so uh, that guy had a metal plate and I still won which makes me feel special though actually oh wait a minute did I, I thought I saw something moving did I see something moving or did I just see sometimes parallax makes me think I see something moving um But yeah, what that actually was, was me firing wildly at him and getting a lucky headshot. So he's probably actually really frustrated. Because I'm not good enough, probably, to defeat that guy. But the thing, and honestly, like, the fact that you can get lucky headshots in this game is actually one of the things I like about it. I can totally imagine why a, why a player might say, you know, that, that they... Um, that they don't like the ability to kill someone with a lucky headshot in this game because it reduces the value of skill. And certainly there are definitely certain types of players for whom making it be skill-based is like the number one thing they care about. Um, and they feel like, oh, if it's all up to skill, I will win. And so I could see that. But for me, as somebody who's not likely to be the highest skill player in a match, okay, I really appreciate the fact that I can still beat someone occasionally who who outstrips me in skill. Okay, so Red of course says, well, isn't part of the skill being able to aim for that headshot? Yes, um, but, like, there's a, a lot of games that want to be more skill-based will still, for instance, say, like, oh, you need to get multiple headshots in a row. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll really amp up the health or have you wear, like, a helmet or something and say, like, you know, um, if you, you... Yeah, headshots are great. Headshots are important, but you can't just get a single lucky headshot and kill the guy. Um, a single being able to kill someone with a single lucky headshot means that uh, you can win with luck and you can win with getting the drop on someone in a way where like say a game like Cycle Frontier which uh, you know has much higher health and, and higher time to kill means that the guy who's getting multiple headshots on you as he's jumping around in a circle that guy wins and the person who gets the drop on somebody else you can get even if you get a headshot on them initially they can spin around start jumping around and defeat you um, and so that game is much more like if you this the 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 value of skill to victory is higher 
And then in this game, value of skill is still very high. It's I mean, it's always high in, in shooters. And getting and being able to get a headshot is definitely really important. But in this game, because a single headshot from sh shot from almost any gun will immediately kill you, um, that means that even if somebody's an idiot and they have no idea what they're doing, they can fire wildly in your direction and one of their shots will still hit your head occasionally and they'll be like yes i won you know so that's probably what happened to me just there was i you know i got that uh that headshot not because i was amazing at, i mean i did have good reaction time i did start shooting at him before he shot at me i wasn't playing badly but it's not like you know it was because of my incredible precision shooting that that i was able to beat that guy um it was pure luck that i got him without him really doing enough damage to threaten my life um, okay, so I've just been screwing around. Mostly just because I don't want to get killed before that alarm trap goes off. Um, I mean, part of me is kind of like, should I have just gone for... Should I have just gone for that container? I mean, there's no, re no reason for anyone to come up on this ridge in particular. And I thought maybe if one of those people that was fighting down there, like, exposed themselves, I could take them out and feel special. Um, but now I think one of them is probably survived and one of them is probably camping that container. And so they're not going to go for it. And so what I have to do is wait till the end of the match. I have to survive until the end of the... Oh, wait, somebody got the red chest. Who got it? Where is it? Ah, okay. I'm not going to catch up with that person. Um... So it could be that they're going to wait till the end of the match to just run and grab it, assuming that, you know, if if they camp it that long and no one else goes for it, they'll go for it. Is sometimes, sometimes a strategy people will use. And so it could be that if I just let live long enough, <laughs> it'll go off. But um, this is a stream. I shouldn't just settle down somewhere safe and try to live long enough. That doesn't feel like it's the right move. So I don't know. Maybe I should take just a few risks explore some of these areas around here, potentially die, potentially be frustrated by my failure to complete this challenge. I don't know. So this spot right here, it's got a little tunnel behind it, uh, which is kind of fun. Oh, yes! Yes! Okay, mission accomplished. I don't care what happens now. I can die and it's fine because we did we accomplished what I'm here to accomplish. We completed the challenge. So it looks like no one has looted this yet, which is understandable. There's not a lot here. I mean, fuel is purple, but it's also not used for a lot of stuff. So so I'm just going to do that mostly just for the experience, not because I'm going to get any benefit from it whatsoever. While the jammer will tell you, you know, if it if it disrupted someone, which means you can tell where people are, by you know whether or whether somebody's close because you use the jammer, um, that tower does not tell you that, and so you jam a whole bunch of people potentially in a wider area than the jammer does, but it doesn't give you any recon information. So I'm digging for a buried cache here because I know that there's a spot here. Chances of it actually being the cache very slim. Yeah, no, they're not. It's not actually the cache. So, people often ignore the destroyed power pole just because there's not a lot there and it's out of the way. The plane is coming. Prepare to fight for the airdrop. I'm gonna run up here. Well, actually, you know what I should do? I mean, I'm being reckless right now because I genuinely don't care now if I die. Um,. I'm just trying to grab as much stuff and go, or as much stuff and die. Um, so, yep, nobody's been here. Nobody cares about the tower. I actually like spawning here initially, because I get some, some nice loot here that nobody else is competing with me for. And then it's really close to another building that actually is more popular. And then I get a really nice angle on, you know, uh, sneaking up on that building. Oh, somebody did actually come here. They just didn't get everything. Okay, so... You know what? Since I don't care if I live or die.
maybe I'll just head down this way anyway. See what's going on with the uh, airdrop. Probably get killed, but at least, at least something interesting will happen, right? We gotta, we gotta end this stream with a bang. Even if that bang is a gunshot to my head from a camper who just hears me rustling through the woods. Or here's a car alarm that I triggered. Well, that couldn't have gone better. Um, oh, wait. Oh, wait. Okay, they didn't stealth it. Oh, they're right in front of me. They're coming at me. Probably right behind that truck. Oh, there they are. And they saw me. That was dumb of me to go up there. I should have held still. Oh, he's got a freaking sniper rifle. Look at this guy. I could do this all day. Uh, well, not very well, though, unfortunately. Oh! Oh! Only the second airdrop carrier that I've killed. Ooh, hey, there's a bird cache there. Cool, I gotta remember that. Um, so there was enough conflict going on in this area. It's entirely possible that was the last dude. Or not. It could be that somebody's about to absolutely murder me. Okay, so we need to at least get this. And I want this as well. So that I could be like, where's the nearest person for me to not... Oh, the nearest person is at the distant exit? Well, okay, somebody could still have a disruptor on. Let's replace my bugle here. Somebody could... Is there anything in here that I really want to get that's more valuable than what I have? I don't need a transmitter. I'd love to collect some iodine. Okay. Okay, great. If the nearest person is down there... You know what? I'll just go in the opposite direction. Wait a minute. No. Yeah. No? The thing is, okay, somebody could have a disruptor or a jammer. Somebody could have a jammer. If they've got a jammer... That means that my portable signals detector I just used would not have detected them either way. Um, and, and I assume it would have just found the nearest person who was not jammed. Um, so it's entirely possible there could still be a camper in this direction uh, with, with, a, with a jammer waiting for me. But, so what I'll probably do is I'll probably take the coastal route. Oh, wait, you know what? I should have grabbed some of the adrenaline. Adrenaline would have been nice, because I'm carrying a heavy load now. Oh, here's the ticky ticky. Oh, wait, see you later, Safa. Thank you for joining us. Having you in the chat has actually been really, really helpful and informative, so I appreciate it. Anyway, I've got iodine, so I can afford to take my time. Pick up some chemicals. Oh. And then I'm going to take the coastal route because it's not very well exposed to good camping spots. And so I can get really close before I have to expose myself. And then I might get the crow warning before having to contend with whatever threat is over here. Okay, I feel like I would have seen the crows by now if somebody was here. So nobody's here. So let's search these last couple of cars and get out with the package. Oh, come on. There we go. Portable signals detector. Let's go. Whew! All right, all right. This is going to be, I mean, unless something surprising is about to happen... Uh, this is a good way to end the stream. I actually really like this. Oh, whatever. Not important. Okay, what's going to be in the car? Oh, just a transmitter. Whatever. Got it anyway. All right. Yes! <laughs> I feel bad for that dude because I was about to just, you know, if I was playing under normal circumstances, I probably would have just headed for the exit, quietly escaped. That guy would have gotten out with his prize just fine. We all would have been... But basically, because I have this horrible fear of boring people, 
and I'm running a stream, I had to go after that guy, and then I killed him and took his stuff. I feel guilty. <laughs> But I also feel good because I got the stuff, and that was great. So I got, you know, two kills, which is 600 XP. I got the airdrop, which is 500 XP. I traveled 100 meters. Oh, oh you know what I should have done? I should have run around in circles with the airdrop. I forgot. There, there's a seasonal challenge for running 300 meters with the airdrop. And I forgot to do it. I should have just run around in circles. Ah, that was stupid. That was stupid. Forgot. I think I just never go after the airdrop, so I just forgot. That that was a thing I wanted to do. Oh, well. Anyway, let's refresh my uh, inventory for next time. But more importantly, let's go to our challenges. Yes. I caught people with the alarm traps. I'm done with today's challenges. And then I don't have any seasonal challenges finished. I did loot an extra red chest, which is nice. Um, I've consumed a bunch of pills. Uh, but... Yep. I haven't done everything. I still got so much left to do. But luckily, there's 116 days left in the season, so I've got plenty of time. Whew! That was exhausting, but we did everything we came here to do, and I'm feeling good about that. So uh, thank you all for hanging out with me. A special big thanks to Safa, who left. Uh, you know, uh, if he watches this video back later, thank you so much for coming in and uh, you know lending us your expertise in the chat. And I guess I should go back to work. So, um... There's a subscribe button. Here's links to more videos. Yeah, I'll probably make more Vigor content, and that'll go there. And uh, good, good afternoon <laughs> to everyone. Or evening. I don't know where you live. Maybe it's morning.